This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, March the 13th, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Leander of Seville, whose brother was Isidore of Seville. Leander was the older of the two brothers, and he was the Bishop of Seville before Isidore. Their sister, St. Florentina, was a celebrated abbess of 40 convents, overseeing about a thousand Benedictine sisters. All three siblings were noted authors and preachers and established institutions of learning. There is another brother, Fulgentius, who was Bishop of Echia and who is also a canonized saint. Given the historical impact of the family and the spiritual depth of their writing, we have to be awed for a moment that they all lived at the same time, let alone that they all came from the same family. Leander died today in AD 600 and is venerated in both the East and the West. And today is the birthday in 1593 of French painter and muralist Georges de la Tour, born in that northeastern part of France which has been both French and German and was at the time of his birth part of the Austrian-led Holy Roman Empire. Latour's works are iconic. Almost all of the best of them are chiascuro works, which play with sharp contrast between light and darkness. And most of them are lit by candlelight, which is striking. In, for example, his masterpiece, St. Jerome Reading, we see the saint holding a piece of folded up parchment. And between the reader and the paper, Jerome holds a candle, which is mostly obscured by the paper itself. The real subject, though, isn't Jerome or the paper, it's the light. The tip of the flame rises above the paper, but the light causes the paper to glow, while Jerome's face and beard are dramatically lit from beneath by the single flame. In The Dream of St. Joseph, an otherworldly and frankly scary angel holds a candle mostly obscured by its arm while it touches the mind of the sleeping Joseph. Latour's works are hung in some of the most celebrated museums in the world, including the Louvre, the Museo del Prado, Preston Hall, the Frick, the Getty, the Met in New York, and the National Gallery in D.C., where the repentant Magdalene can and should be seen in the West Building. And finally today, in 1138, Cardinal Gregorio Conti of Chicano was elected as Pope Victor IV, to succeed Pope Anacletus II, but it was not to last. The times were furiously turbulent, and the cardinal electors were not validly constituted, nor informed and instructed, and so at the urging of St. Bernard of Clairvaux, he freely resigned his office and declared that both his election and the election of his predecessor had not been valid, and thus they are remembered in history as anti-popes Anacletus and Victor. Only a few times in history has the direct line of the papacy been interrupted in this way. And these short interruptions don't really have an impact on the church because the successor of St. Peter has always been elected. And so there have always been gaps where no pope existed. Some elections at turbulent moments in church history have gone on for months or even years. The modern notion of a gathering of the cardinals for the funeral of the Holy Father, followed by a week or two of conclave, is just that, modern. In years past, news of the death of the Pope might take a month to reach the edges of the world, and then the travel of the various cardinals to Rome for the election might take several months more, and then the discussion of the state of the universal church and what the next Pope might need to do would require more discussion yet, and the election would follow that, and the coronation would come months after that, leaving the church formally without a Pope for months or even years at a time. And so the recognition that some votes were invalid doesn't really create a problem historically or theologically. That Gregorio Conti humbled himself and set aside the papacy is perhaps the more amazing story here. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.